Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at the final set of questions from section 3 of the Purple Booklet. This is questions 108 to 110. This is a question about hearing aids and the values of frequencies that are amplified, and that's called gain. We're given quite a lot of information here, uh, and so we'll start with 108, which says hearing aid S has most of its gain in the frequency range from 600 to 4,500 hertz. S is a good general purpose hearing aid. Why? So we're told in the stem that the average frequencies for human speech, the range of frequencies, is going to be 100 hertz to 5,000 hertz. And because the range of frequencies is covered by this um, particular hearing aid is 600 hertz to 4,500 hertz, it's quite close. And that means that most human speech would occur in the frequency range, and that would be good for general purpose. So we know that the answer for number 108 will be B. 109 then says, which of the following is correct? From 300 to 700 hertz, S has a greater gain than T by an average of around 20 decibels. Well, if we look at it in the graph, and I haven't copied it out exactly, um, there is definitely um, a difference between the quality of S and the quality of T. Straight away I saw that S would be a better hearing aid because it does have a better gain over a larger value of frequencies. Um, but the average gain wouldn't be 20. If we look at the scale of the graph, the difference between 0 and 20, so the difference between the two lines on average would have to be that long. And we see that the arrows I drew previously aren't that long, so the average isn't going to be around 20. It's going to be far less than that. What about T? T will amplify a smaller range of frequencies relative to S. So you might think that the lines go for the same range of frequencies, um, but amplification only occurs when the gain is positive. So we're looking at the range of frequencies above this line, above this x-axis, and the range of frequencies um, for S and for T are quite different, and we can see that S does amplify over a greater value of frequencies the values of frequencies um, that result in a positive gain, which is an amplification, is greater for S than for T. So T will amplify a smaller range of frequencies relative to S, that's true. So the answer for 109 is going to be B as well. And the final question on the paper, which of the following is closest to the factor by which hearing aid S multiplies the intensity of a 1000 hertz sound well, we're given an equation here, so I suppose this is what we're going to have to use. Uh, if we were to use, think about factors, it's going to be um, probably something to do with this fraction here. We, if we look at the graph for 1000 hertz, and I've got plenty of lines here, so we'll, we'll get rid of some of these. We can see, if we draw a line up from 1000 hertz, we can see that the gain is roughly... I haven't drawn this very well. In the actual thing, you can see it's quite clearly going to be 15. The scale of mine isn't very good. But we can see that the gain um, for this in decibels is going to be 15 decibels. So I'm just going to write down 15 equals 10 log 10 on i over i naught. Now the i is the intensity and the ratio of the intensity before and after inter the interference from the hearing aid is going to be the factor by which the um, intensity is multiplied, right? It's going to be the ratio of before and after. So we're really looking for what i over i naught is going to be. Well, why don't we divide both sides by 10 and we get log 10 of i over i naught. It's going to be equal to 1.5. We know from log rules that x to the power of z is going to be equal to y. This is the way I think of it. And it helps me rearrange it and think that i over i naught, therefore, is going to be 10 to the power of 1.5, which is a bit difficult if you don't have a calculator. And of course, we want to try and work this out without one. So another way of thinking of 1.5 is going to be 3 over 2. And if you ever have um, a decimal as an indice or a power, then it's best to put it into a fraction because this is the same as three times one half. And that 
in a power is going to be a square root. And I'll, I'll show you what it means now. So 10 to the power of 1.5 is going to be equal to 10 to the power of 3 over 2, which is going to be equal to 10 cubed on all of that to the power of a half. And if you have something to the power of a half, it's going to be square root. If it's going to be 1 over 3, it's going to be cubed root. 1 over 4, it's going to be the fourth root, and so on. So we're going to try and work out what the square root of 10 over 3 is. So 10 over 3 is obviously going to be 10 times 10, which is 100, times 10, which is 1,000. So the square root of 1,000. And that's going to be equal to i over i naught, as we can see here. So which of the numbers that we've been given here, a, b, c, or d, um, is going to be closest to this? Well, the square root of 1,000 obviously isn't going to be 1.5. Um, 15, you might guess, is probably going to be far too low. Uh, the first one that I would want to try is 30, because 30 um, times 30, of course, is going to be 900. And it's a little bit low, so any numbers that are smaller than that aren't really going to work. So we know that the factor by which um, the intensity is multiplied is going to be greater than 30. And because 30 is the biggest number, that means the answer to the final question on the paper is going to be 30, in which case that's D. So that was a question about uh, some hearing aids and the amplification produced by each. I hope that helped.